Tommy, um, you are a Barca fan from birth. Uh, it's almost in your DNA, you can it say. Is. And the case we were talking about today, you were presenting this journey where Barca was in huge problems, a huge crisis, uh, and it was a transformation. Uh, so, so what made you interested in, in uh, dissecting this case? Well, as you said, it's in my DNA. So I'm passionate. Whatever uh, relates to Barcelona, I'm obviously interested. Yeah. But the key aspect, it was that idea, and many people believe that football being a sport, a sort of, you know, um, entertainment business, it, everything is about chance and about paying money and getting, you know, big players and, you know, ball rolling. And that was the case. The, the case was a, a very well uh, pers uh, planned and implemented transformation program by these guys in 2003 that really created a holistic and integrated approach to what Barca had to be from a social perspective perspective, from a sports perspective, from a financial perspective, from a marketing perspective, that's really a program with a number of projects. And the idea or the motivation for that was not only that I love Barca and whatever is around it, but also I love project management. And Barca makes a great case study to see how project management can be your tool for success. Yeah. That was the main motivation for me. And the interesting thing was... Um, the, the start was the vision, and, and you said that Barca is more than a club. The vision, yeah. Barca is more than a club. Correct. The more than a club motto was developed during Franco times to mean that Barca, behind the sport, behind the football, is the Catalan identity, also the demo democracy identity against the Franco regime. But then, in 2003, had to be transformed into something else because we already have democracy, and so the more than a club meant in an international uh, meaning for the word that the Barca would be a club with values, uh, with strong ethical values, with a love for football, with best players but also best people. So more than a club meaning that is something that is an identity, it's a feeling that is not only related to Catalan people but also to world population and create a sense of um, you know, friendship, a meaning of um, fair play, humility, and of course, spectacular sport, spectacular football, quality product, quality customer experience. Barca means all that. So what happens within people when you start with a vision? Well, what happens in general, in many companies, is that they consider a vision like a statement, something that you simply pronounce, and then the rest will follow. The interesting case in Barcelona is that developed this vision out of the mission statement. The vision was called the virtual circle, and that was easily translated into a number of projects. And that's what I use this case to tell companies and tell businesses that they have to develop, apart from vision statements, they have to articulate visions that can be easily translated into programs and projects. And that is a key factor of success for project implementation. So, so actually the how flows from the why. So you start with a Correct. good why, you get a good how. Perfect. So, so what, how, how did Barca go about then translating that, that vision into how in practical terms? Well, the executives themselves say that they roll up their sleeves. They implemented 50 projects the first year, uh, escaping from egos, from hierarchies. The video I play by Mr. Mark Ingla, who was the vice president, as he explains how hierarchies or egos or statuses were not relevant. The whole club had to be involved. I just was told by one of the attendees at the conference that IKEA CEO is like that. He, he spent some time in, yeah. the, in the business yeah. to see 
thinking, you know, what is the customer experience? So this involvement by executives, far from being too hierarchical, I think is a is a great example that we get from Barcelona and also from IKEA. Yeah, to have streams actually leading to customer value rather than hierarchies going up from that. Exactly, it's all around the customer experience, and we all work for that. And the, of course, the position at some point is relevant because someone has to make the decisions. But I think it's very important, not only the sense of the customer experience, but employees themselves. Leadership, by example, is what really works. When employees see leaders that they only give orders, and yeah. you know they order people around, this is not the best motivation to technique no. that exists. They get stupid. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. When you see someone that is really working along with you and helping you go through it, yeah. and it's also suffering the difficulties with you, mm -hmm. that's the best example. That's very old, you know, Alexander the Great used to do that many thousand years ago. Yeah. He led his people almost to the India uh, country at that time, but he always was the first in line. Yeah, yeah. That's the type of leadership we still want from the 21st century. We don't want bureaucrat leadership. We want involved leaders, highly ethical leader, leaders, because yeah. this is something also we learned from the Barcelona case. There's principles like humility, like fair play, like respect for the uh, adversary. All those values really impregnated mm. the whole project, the whole process. Wow. And that's very important because that's the real motivator that makes people, you know, stay hours mm. and do the best. Yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. know the success of Barca was unbelievable. And still many people think that maybe the chance that the ball, you know, entered the, the net. But that's not the case. It was six championships out of six championships in 2009, 2010, and nothing was due to fortune, yeah. to luck. Everything was carefully planned. Everything was carefully, let's say, uh, ignited with this tremendous passion for the values that Barcelona conveys. I think this is so interesting because what you painted so so well during your lecture was a plan and a system uh, and a system built around values. So, so one question that would resonate in my mind: Is there something that is uh, the top of top of mind or the the preceding principle in all this, or is the key really to create a system and balance the system? Well, I think for me the answer is that all this comes from an early education. Yeah. That's why some players had to be expelled from the club. Yeah. Uh, I do believe that you learned at any age. Uh, my age now, I'm, I'm learning a lot every day. But to be honest, some of the principles or, or values that, let's say, are key and important in that Bar Barcelona uh, pro program, all that you don't learn one day to the other. You need to be born with them. So that's why the Football Academy of Barcelona, La Masia, the farmhouse, is so important. Because you are educated in these values since you are a child. So players of Barcelona, uh, like Iniesta, Messi, Xavi, Piqué, at the time Cesc Fabregas, and many others, they only, they did, they did learn the Barca style of playing. They were always talented, but also they learned principles and values that you will never abandon for the rest of your life. And that's the key factor, the balance, the system. That is not something that is written in papers, it's already there. So the merit, the credit of um, coaches such as Frank Reichardt of Pep Guardiola is, is high, it's great, but it's limited to their role because the core values were already implemented in the minds of these people. What you need is coaches and project managers that live by, this, by, by these values. You, let, you need those CEOs that, that get involved and that they really help people, that they are humble, you know? And those are the exemplary leaders we need for the 21st century. Thank you, Jordi, so much for explaining the Barca system and also showing the passion of Barca. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.